Thank you for joining me and welcome to my Watercolors by the Sea Beach Figures demonstration where I'm going to show you how to simply paint a figure and I am excited about this lesson because I'm going to change her hair color and her swimming suit and show you how to paint skin tones and colorful shadows and then uh, yeah sand colors so this is a good introduction to my watercolors by the sea about my upcoming program. I'll talk about it just for a few minutes and we'll get right to the demonstration because I know that's what you're here for. But if you go, oh, hi, Betty. Hi, Angie. Um, if you go to my website at cindybriggs.com, if you'd like, there is a place where you can sign up Watercolors by the Sea and you'll be getting my priority emails for my reduced price. Twelve modules, kind of like Quick Sketch, except now these are more fine art paintings, where we're not using the pen all the time. They're um, they're how I paint my larger scale paintings, but on at a small size. I have paintings from uh, palm trees and seaside villages and people on the beach, um, seashells, all kinds of things. I just keep going. So when I say it's 12 plus, it's some of like in the boat category, I have two videos for that already for you. A lot of these will be ready for you on the 10th of September. You'll get your letter with your, your um, sign up or sign into the private membership site and for the Facebook group page and all that. And I will be sending a supply list right away to people that are signing up probably tomorrow. It's just been a really busy day. Um, also with that, I do have a private Facebook group for watercolors by the sea. I have some bonus quick sketch paintings and I will be going to Portugal and um, Italy in October where I am filming more um, additional quick sketch and regular paintings for you. So it's it's going to keep coming in and growing. And when I do webinars, I really like to include all my people when I can. So um, before I get going, I wanted to show you my palette. It's the same palette that I use for most of my workshops. And in the Quick Sketch program, the only difference is I may add some titanium buff, which is an awesome color for sand. And I may use a little bit of fresh white, and I really like these colors fresh. So they're not in my, my standard palette. Um, I am recommending that you get the four uh, in my Dynasty Black Gold 311, which you get up from the brushguys.com. And a smaller brush, it could be a one or a, a, a zero or a double zero size, just something smaller for you to work with. So you have, you can get some of those fine details. And paper towels and water. Now with each, each module you're going to get, you're gonna get a um, printout that um, you can print out. It has your reference photo on it. And then also with some very complicated scenes, I may include a tracing. You know, if you're overwhelmed by a scene like this, I'm gonna give you a little bit of help. And that will be included with some of the modules. But most of them, I think it's good for you to draw on your own. Here I've got my my palette ready, 
my drawing. Here's the picture. I'm just painting the, the girl so that we don't spend two hours working on this. So one thing I love, hi, Carolee and Bonnie, I see you in there. One thing I want to show you is mixing skin tones. This is all about skin. So I'm spritzing my water, um, my watercolors with just plain water. And then when I put my brush in my water, I drag it across the top so that I lose some of that water. Okay, so the colors I'll be using today for skin tones, I like Naples yellow and yellow ochre are great for my yellows. And then I have found that rose is really good for children's skin tones. So I mix that with those yellows to get a little bit of a range of a nice, warm skin tone. And now that is my under layer. This is this is where the light is hitting the body. Now one thing you may notice is in a photograph it goes kind of gray or black and we you know if we were sitting there it wouldn't be that gray. So my first step is to just use a very light wash of skin tone and go right into the hair. You can change the style of the swimsuit. You can change the color of their hair. Today I had students that <laughs> made, made it so there were two boys and one girl. One took um, one of the girls out. We just had two girl, I mean, the boy out, we just had little girls. So you can change these to look like somebody you know. You can change the swimsuit pattern. It's really kind of fun. And so I've got a nice, kind of an herbal tea or coffee mix, just so I know where that body is. And this is in the sand in the shadow, so I can go right into that. Okay, and this is also skin. This is her leg. So we're gonna let that dry for a minute. Um, something you may notice is I closed, I closed her mouth. Um, I had a little more ponytail because I'm thinking about my granddaughter. Yeah, you can change the style of the swimming suit. She's here she's got a little bikini on and I'm making it a one piece. I put a shovel in her hand and there's a little bucket there and a little bucket there. So I'm just simplifying taking out whatever I don't need and enjoying what I do have. So this is the light color of the skin. While that's drying, I'm gonna go ahead and paint my sand bucket and I feel like using that phthalo yellow green and I've got a milky puddle right here and I'm just gonna have fun with color. So a photograph is really just a starting point. It doesn't have to be um, matched exactly. In, in fact, I'm, I'm always taking pictures of random things so I can put them in my paintings. There we go, that's kind of fun. I like that bright green. And these never look quite the same in real life as they do with the camera, but I think it's, it's a good start. Let's see, she's starting to dry. I can't paint next to a wet area, so both both of these are kind of in trouble. So let's go into her hair. I'm turning this cute little brunette into a blonde because my granddaughter is blonde. And what I want is a light wash of 
um, Naples yellow, yellow ochre. And let's just put some of that color up here. The key with, with hair is that you don't want to make it look like a, a helmet. And one thing with blondes, sometimes you have a little bit of green undertones in the hair. There we go. You can have fun with color. I can even put a little bit of lavender in her hair. Maybe she's been swimming in the pool a lot and her hair's turning green. Anyway, I like lots of color in the hair. Um, as I'm painting, if you have any questions, you can just ask them in the chat section. And I will watch, watch that. The shadow shapes are basically another layer of color. I can push it a little darker with some permanent brown added to the mix and even some rose. And that's how I start getting value changes in the skin. Now something else to notice in the value changes is sometimes the skin almost goes blue. But I have to be careful not to go too far with, with the blue. What, let's see, question. What colors did you originally use for the blonde hair? I used, I started out with Naples Yellow, then Raw Sienna, and put those in here. And I dropped in a touch of orange and a touch of lavender. So great question, Debbie. So I'm gonna play with my colors, like you see here, that range of color in the skin tone. As I look, at the figure. And I, I recommend you don't start with the face. The skin tone color, I just had a question about that, is Naples Yellow, Raw Sienna, and Rose. And that's how you get your basic skin tone, especially for children. You can try different yellows and different reds and roses to make skin, and that works really well. If somebody has darker skin, I tend to go into my permanent brown and even adding some more blues to it. I start with pretty light, whether their skin is real light or brown, because I'm painting the lightest part of the skin that I see. So look at that and go from there. So I'm starting with this leg. It's a big, easy shape. And I'm staying out of the light area. There's some light on the end of that knee. Now I'm noticing that she's, it's a little darker up here. It's a little bluer. And I don't want it to look seriously blue, but I do want to have some of that, that lavender color in there. The wet paint is mixing and mingling on the page. Sometimes you'll have a touch of green in the skin. So this is me pushing, pushing it a little bit. Now you need to put your color in and then leave it alone. If you go into it too much, you're gonna have some problems. And here I am already mixing up just, I just feel like I need a little bit right here. There we go. So that leg has a lot of color on it. You have to work your way around the painting. And what's fun about this with that green bucket, that green's gonna be reflecting on her. And I may drop in some unexpected color here and there. But mostly it's skin tone. Now when I started painting, um, it took me years before I even tried to do a figure. So I understand if you're not too sure about this, but think of a figure as, oops, I can't go up into that. So I'll stop 
on that hand and I'll come back. I think it's a figure as a value study. All I'm doing is starting with my light and then adding mediums and then, and then my dark. So I can't paint here or here. So I can go up into the face and still using those same kind of colors. Oh, Angie. I see people's names pop up, so if I haven't mentioned your name, it's because I'm, I'm just trying to get in, into this painting and have it, have it work. It's always kind of a thrill to play with colors on these live videos. So I'm going into her hair a little bit. Her face is pretty light, so I don't want to go too dark there. I am going to bring just a touch of that green reflection and gently blend. There. Let's bring some of that color into her hair. Well, and in a few weeks, I'm headed to Italy and then Portugal. So um, always looking for new subjects to include in my, my videos. This could use a little bit of blue. But as soon as I start noticing I'm going too far with the blue, I may come back in. So she's starting to come forward. And while her skin is drying, I think I've, oh, she still has a leg right there, but I can't do that right now. Let's see, I wanna make this little bucket over here orange. You know, those plastic toys can be really fun and colorful. And I think to tie in with her yellow blonde hair, I will make the shovel more of a yellow color. So we've got lots in my class. Oh, I think it was Nora. She put a shovel in her hand. I thought, well, that's a good idea. So I have to give her credit. And her hair can use a little bit more color. So I have some yellow ochre and I just want to suggest some value changes in this hair. Not fill it all in. You don't want hair to be like a helmet. So you just want to put some color in there, but don't fill it all in. There we go. So it starts to develop layers. In fact, she can have some that comes out, right? So always make sure your painting is, is dry before you go into an area. This whole painting is um, wet on dry paper. And you don't have any wet on wet. That doesn't mean you couldn't do it that way. Let's see, this gets pretty dark down in here. And I'm gonna add a little permanent brown. I did have some lavender there. Right in here, that's pretty dark. And then there is a shadow that cuts across her leg right here. So I'm just looking for, for those value changes. And this actually kind of does that there. So I've got her leg has some nice light and shadow on it. Right here, I'm not putting in those. Can you show, oh, show your reference photo again. Okay, so here's my reference photo. 
I've got a cute little brunette in a bikini and she's got an orange bucket I, and a green, another green bucket. So I turned it into a green bucket with an orange bucket and added the um, little shovel. So thank you, Sienna, for reminding me of that. I, when I when I edit the video and put it on our different sites, I'll include this photo. And you'll also have this PDF that you can download and pick and choose who you might want to paint or just use it as a guide. Like I said, I had, I had women today who turned the kids into their grandchildren. This became a boy, two boys and a girl, or somebody did two girls. You can change the hair colors. So thank you, Sienna, for reminding me to, to show that. Now, when you're, you're doing a figure this small, it's not a um, portrait. It's just a little figure painting. Let's see, what color? swimsuit do I want? So I can make it any color I want. And since my granddaughter likes blue, hmm, I'm tempted to go with the blue because I can. So let's, why not? Blues and lavenders in here. And I didn't make this a, um, a bikini, because I know she wouldn't wear a bikini. So I, could even, no, I don't want to throw too many. So I'm going back and forth between the lavender and blue. And what'll be really fun with this project that you can try is what you'll do with your little um, beach figures. You're not limited to what, what they're wearing. You can change the colors. This part is in the light. So I'm just gently putting in some color where the light is hitting her back there. And then it's just good to get in and get out of it. Now I'm going into the shadows down in here and the sand, oh, the sand. Here's my titanium bath. And I like to use it fresh. So I'm going to put some sand down. And this is just a little vignette. It's not meant to be a big, fancy painting. Um, kind of leave it unfinished. When I, do, when I do a demonstration, I have to keep it somewhat simple so, so you just get the idea. It just has a little more intensity and it, it mixes you know, well with other colors. I just threw in a little bit of that yellow. You can get by without it fresh. Um, part of it is it's a color that I don't need all the time. You could squeeze a little bit in the corner of your palette and let it dry. I also use wa uh, white, fresh. It, it's good for mixing. Now I put in a little bit of lavender. And when this dries, I'm going to go in and suggest shadows and do some splattering. So one thing I, I want to show you is that with the face, you don't want to get into putting eyeballs and eyelashes and way too many details. I want a little more color right here. Now it's in the light. There we go. So 
So all you need is a little bit of that skin tone. And I'm putting my glasses on so I can really see it. And even that, a tiny bit of that permanent brown, you just want a dot of color. I closed her lips. See that? I didn't like that they were open for this painting. So I'm just going to put a little bit of color, that same skin tone on there. There's a little bit of dark under the nose. And so a little bit of color in the ear. So think minimal. And then here, I don't know why I have that. Oh, I, I made her swimsuit a little more open right there. So let's put in a shadow under here and there. So I'm looking for areas that I could add a little more value change, like underneath the chin. This kind of on the edge of her swimsuit. But this is just fussing. I could actually stop pretty much right now. I don't want to get those hands were just a little too white. So when you have hands, um, a key is, is don't get too involved in the details. Just simplify the shapes and values. This could be a softer edge. And here, these two come right next to each other. So I need to bring some of this permanent brown mix right up to the edge of that other hand. There we go. So you just suggest what's there rather than try to try to get it all just right, or you're you're going to run into problems if you do that. Um, I look, and I'm working very thin. So this is just glazing, glazing a little color. So I'm trying to get some nice value changes. I have that green right there. Think about the items that are around your figure. This could go darker. Sometimes you have color that reflects off something that's near it. Um, your swimsuit might be reflecting a little bit here. And I would like to get a little bit of Color. So I'm just barely adding color when I'm doing this, just to be so subtle that it's soft and pure and sweet. And you can see I'm putting a little lip on my bucket and you know, sticking it in the sand so it's it's not such black color. There we go. Um, this orange bucket over here could use a little bit of value change. So as you can see, wherever you are, it's you've got some color changes throughout. I just realized my swimsuit could use just a little, just a tiniest bit of skin tone kind of reflecting in it. Doesn't mean there's a hole in her swimsuit. It's just color hidden in there. And you may not even be able to see it. So, so something to keep in mind 
in your shadows, and I'll, I'll bring this over again so you can see it, is you need to have warms and cools in your shadows. Even though it's warm sand, there's still going to be some cool colors in that. So I'm just bringing in a little lavender now and then. For those of you who know me, lavender is like my go-to color for lots of things. And I'm just suggesting that there's a few little divots in the sand where she's been walking around and playing. These, so these kids were in Puerto Rico. Okay, let's put in a few divots. Of, um, I don't know if that's the best word, but as a golfer, I'm thinking that might be a good word for it. And this was much easier than painting all the kids. There we go. Don't want that to be too intense. And sometimes we don't have a hard edge. You want to lose an edge now and then. So in this program, I have paintings from all over where I've traveled in my different workshops to Italy and Spain and France and um, Quebec City and California, different places. So it's, it's really fun to go through my pictures and try to decide what I want to add. So right now I'm mixing um, some speckles of sand. So it's, it's my Titanium bath, a little bit of yellow ochre, or there may be some Naples yellow in there. It's just sort of a, a mix. And I'm going to tap to create some sand particles. And I've covered her up so I'm not getting it all over the painting of the little girl. You end up with, with stripes, you know, you can dab at it. You don't want any real recognizable shapes. And I think I'll use some lavender, kind of a lavender mix, just so it's, it's down in there. And one thing I do with my programs is, you know, I, I teach a lesson, let's say palm trees. And you've, you've got images to paint from and and I, I give you a technique, and then I recommend that you go out and paint other, you know, if you have pictures of palm trees, paint those. Or if you're painting beach figures, pick some photos that you might have. And there we go. See what that does? It just gives it a little texture down there. Seashells, maybe have some seashells at home. And you want to paint those, you know, take, take a picture, just set up your own little still life. And you can paint, paint that and post those to our um, private Facebook page. And that's the same for our quick sketch. Some of you haven't posted yet. If you're in a quick sketch program, we love seeing your paintings. And it doesn't matter whether you're just starting or you've gone through and you're, you're going through and, and now doing your own thing in there. We love seeing whatever you do. It makes it a lot of fun. Um, right now I'm just bringing that lavender and letting it kind of bounce around the page a little bit to add some character to the painting. I've got lavender in her hair and her skin. And I would like to get just, I don't really want to go too far. I just want a little touch of color right there, there. I can't explain it. So 
the trick with watercolor is to thin to stop before you go too far. And that's kind of where I am right now. I need to just stop. Show, show you the painting. Let's see if I hold it up a little bit and get it straight on. So you always have to look at the value changes. You put a little more color there. There is a quick demonstration for you which will be in our, our programs. Oh, I hope you had fun with that. Um, let me move this so you can see. Oh, this is, this is a, a real fun tip. You get this at CVS, it's Terry Cloth. And often I will just sort of wipe my brush on it if I'm traveling instead of going through so many paper towels. Here's the photo that I painted from. So remember I said it's not always about just matching what you see. It's about putting your own spin on it. And then here I've got the three kids in um, the different color hair, different color swimming suits. And and here we are with the three kids. So that was just a fun study that I, I did today. And like I said, some people, they changed hair colors and swimsuit colors and, and what was in their hand. Um, one of the students put a, a shovel in this girl's hand, which I kind of like that idea. But what's fun here is they're all turned in different directions and it's got a really interesting outside shape. is look at your shapes. Don't just look at the shape of your figure, but look at the shape around the figure. Is that interesting? What can you do to connect your shape? See this shovel is connected to the bucket and this is connected and she's connected. Everything is one in the painting. So I'm going to see. Oh, here's, here's one of the, the demos I have in the Watercolors by the Sea lesson. Get a couple there. And I have, oh, I have my Watercolors by the Sea notebook. So for instance, this is, this was really fun to do for you. And, oh, I haven't even shown you this one, a little village in Spain. So there's, there's so many different things that I have in the program that I'm really excited to share. I love this boat. This was in Rodopino, and this one was in France, and I've got some seashells, and that's just a taste of what I have. Um, 
ready for you. So there, I'm back on. Thank you for joining me. What time is it? 7.52. So I stayed under, under time. I wanted to keep it all within an hour and leave you some time for, for questions that you can put into the chat. I say, oh, Michael. Hi, Nora. I mentioned you. Robin, Sienna, Susie. Thanks, Lynn. You still would qualify for the drawing. So I have prizes. Uh, painting prizes that you can win. The program has so many bonuses in it. It's like I can't stop. I just keep going. But so webinars and extra um, painting demonstrations, quick sketch demonstrations that are actually bonuses. A lot of my paintings, like you saw, are more finished and um, they take a little longer, but I've really simplified it down so that it's very doable. See, I'm going to be adding more when I go to Portugal. The Facebook group is super fun. A lot of these names on here that I see, hi Hildy, Ellen. Oh, Ellen, I'm so glad to have you. And Michael, yeah, a lot of you I've seen in our Quick Sketch Facebook group. And it's fun in there. When you post up, you get positive comments from everybody else and you get feedback from me. If you want real serious feedback, you need to just ask for it. I'll give you some tips. And if you really need help, you just need to let me know. Sometimes I'm out of town, so I may not respond right away. Hi, Pat. See, I see you in there. And Sharon and Kathy and Jill and Julie and Hildy, Charlene. Carolee, oh hi Carolee, um, my mom's here, and Heather, thank you all for helping me. Yeah, when you post on Facebook, one thing we've been working on is, you know, if you see somebody's art, just like it or love it, it even if you don't want to make a comment, it's just nice to get um, the love because that's what this is all about. It's about encouraging each other. I am here to, to teach you how to simplify a complicated subject and have fun with it and add lots of color and free you up from, you know, copying a photo, you know, making it more your own. And, and then, you know, have you blossom into creating more in that same theme. Do lots of beach people. I can't do 20 videos on just painting people. I want to give you a lot of different subjects to paint from. This was painted live on the beach in Puerto Rico and I videoed it and I videoed the palm tree which was flowing and and just so you'll see how I did. This is a quick sketch and and that's kind of a bonus in with the palm trees. And you'll also get to see some of my other quick sketches. But like I want to say, it's not about quick sketch. It's really about building on, on your skills, drawing with a pencil more than the pen, and, and really pushing yourself with colors and values and relationships. So I'm talking about composition and design but it's always going to be simplified. If you're new to painting, I'll make, I'll make it pretty easy. I hope that looks somewhat easy for you. And if you're really experienced, it will push you to add more color to your paintings and maybe see things a little differently, how you might be able to take one thing and turn it into what you want. So I was hoping to get a picture of my granddaughter on the beach she didn't have her blue swimsuit. So, you know, I just made it up with, with what I had to work from. So thank you for, for the really nice comments. I'm going to see, I've got Debbie and Jeannie. Oh, Linda, Linda was here today. She painted, I suppose she had blondies. All her kids turned blonde. 
and that that was really fun. I should have taken pictures, but I had to dash dash off, and they all stayed and kept painting. Um, Angie and Betty, you're so sweet. I'm really glad you're here. And Carolee, thank you. I've got a couple Charlene's in here and some I don't know your name, but it starts with an H and a C. So I see your names here. Um, let's see, do I have any more questions? Oh, thank you, Heather. I love this next series is building our skills from the Quick Sketch series. So um, no worries if you haven't done Quick Sketch. All my basics, all my how-tos are included in a basics module. So whether you're brand new or, you're, or you've been painting well, all of that is included with each of my programs because I found it's always good to have those reminders and I'm adding to those basics as I go. Like I just did a whole thing on controlling the amount of water in your brush. How long does this new class last? So you'll have access to it through the end of 2020. Most people post their programs for six months to a year and I like to go beyond a year. So you've got plenty of time. I found most people are doing it within about six to eight months. Um, some of my seriously focused painters get through it so fast. They're like, give me more. I want more. So I, this, this has been a long time coming. Oh, thank you, Charlene. I really appreciate the length of the class. Thank you. Yeah, I think I just want to be generous with you. I know you're investing your time and your money, and I really want it to be a good value. So the, info, the link is in the email that I sent you, and um, the information's there for you to sign up. Right now it is 179. No, 197, sorry, 197. Um, I was told that I should make it for, you know, 500 something. And I'm like, no, that's a lot. That's, that, that makes it harder for people. So I've got it for 197 for my, all my favorites, all my people in my, my quick sketch group. And, and those of you who signed up early to get on the list, you were the first ones to hear about it. And um, because the first 25, and I'm not sure if I'm at 25 yet, the first 25 qualify for a drawing where you could win a $400 painting. And then the first 100, I'm gonna have three drawings for um, my, my smaller painting. It may be something, whoops, it may be something like this one. I've got so many of these that, they're just, they, be, they belong. This one's not going though, because it reminds me of my granddaughter. Um, so that's kind of fun. Thank you. Feel free to go anytime that you're ready. I don't want to hold you too long. I'm going to wrap it up here in just a minute. Oh, here's a Q&A. Because I want to get everybody in and kind of move you along together. And that seems to work out the best. Thank you um, for saying it, it. The quick sketch has been a good value. Yeah, I'm working. I'm working on more. This one for every video like this that I just demonstrated for you. I have to spend hours after that editing because I'm so picky that. I have to do my own editing. I do have someone helping me with some of the other technical issues of the website, um, but I'm doing most of this by myself. And it's, it's really fun to figure it out. Something I did want to mention is you need to have a current uh, system that you're working with to watch the videos. So if you have a really old iPad and you've never, you know, you haven't updated it for years and years, it's probably not going to work. If it's newer, it'll be fine. It'll be fine. It's, it's when you have programs. 
I put in the colors that I'm using. I, met, I mentioned um, some tips along the way. It's, it's very free form. It's kind of like if you were in one of my workshops, except I can't be right there with you. All I can do is, is reach out to you. I want to thank Sienna and Sharon and Robin and Nara. Oh, one thing I forgot to mention. Yes, please share this with a friend. Um, I would love to have more, more people, of course. I mean, the more the merrier because then we have images getting posted more often. And so, yes, you can share this rate with a friend, forward your email, and we, we can get them in. Heather, thank you. Let's see. She says, thank you for sharing your talent and bringing such joy. She's such a good friend. I do love doing this. I'm Michael, Jill, Hildy, uh, NJ, and thank you. Hildy, Charlene, Carolee, Angie, Linda, Jeannie, Debbie, and Heather. But I'm going to wrap this up and say thank you very, very much. Email me at cindybriggsart at gmail.com if you have a specific question. I'm not good at selling stuff. So anyway, it's all there. Um, I'm more into the, the painting and showing you how to mix and mingle colors and, and simplify your shapes and take out all the clutter and, and make your painting about what you feel and what you see. So. Thank you very much. And some of you are still here. You should have an after party. And videos will just keep coming. So I think I answered most questions. So anyway, love you all. Thanks for being here. And we will see you soon.